This video is brought to you by Patreon. By signing up on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon, you get early access to all content, as well as grab bags of valuable cards and amazing mats exclusive to patrons. You can help keep coverage for Paper Magic alive by showing your support on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon today. Hello everyone and welcome back to Fat Pack Magic. We're here in the final round of the Dark Side FNM Pioneer event. And on the right, we've got Rob Pisano, who's played his way to the top, and he's facing off against Steven Gillette the best a man can get, and he's playing Mono Blue, and not just any Mono Blue Devotion deck, it's Mono Blue fully foiled out. I mean, this deck is just beautiful. I mean, take a look at those lands. All the same art, and all incredibly gorgeous. So, Rob is starting off, he's got two lands, and it looks like he's gonna pump out a Knight of the White Orchid that's just a 2-2 bear with first strike with no additional benefits, and pass the turn back to Steven, who plays out yet another gorgeous foiled land and uh hey here's a thassa's oracle and it's gonna get a little bit of value i mean he can choose to put one on the top or bottom both but it's gonna act as a blocker to that 2-2 two -two knight so he opts to keep one on top and one on the bottom and pass the turn back to rob and <laughs> rob's got heliod and this is pretty interesting because sitting in Rob's hand is the walking ballista. He needs to go off, but he's got to be a little bit careful because Steven is playing blue and that could mean counter magic Trixies. Especially when he's just going to pass the turn with three blue mana open. I mean, that could be a signal, but... Steven is also playing blue, which means that he could just be playing flashy creatures at the end of Rob's turn. So he passes the turn back to Rob, and the question is, is Rob going to go for it? Now, he only needs two more white pips to turn on Heliod, so he might just toss out something in there, maybe to try and bait out some counter magic and then clear the way for his walking ballista on the next turn. So an idyllic Grange is going to come down, and because there's three planes in play, that means that he's going to be able to put a plus one plus one counter, and it looks like it's going to go onto that Knight of the White Orchid, making it a 3-3 for a striker, and Rob says, okay, here we go, you gotta counter this, right? It's an Arcanist Owl, a 3-3 Flyer, but very importantly, it's got four white and four blue pips on it, meaning that Heliod could go live. Steven's obviously got a response, and it looks like he's going to tap the Heliod and make it lose all of its abilities until end of turn in response to the Arcanist Owl, which is going to be able to dig for an artifact or an enchantment or another Arcanist Owl. I mean, that's, that's pretty good value right there, right? I mean, you get a creature and then you get another creature from it. So he crashes in for three, bringing Steven down to 17 before passing the turn back. Both players are firing on all cylinders, but it seems that Steven still needs a little bit of help to get his engine going. For mana, there's a Ley Line of Anticipation, which means that he's going to have Flash for all of his spells and permanents and all, basically everything but a land drop. So at end of turn, or during Rob's turn, Steven's going to be able to play lots of tricks. But the question is, was that turn too much? Is Rob going to be able to get away with the win here? It looks like he's got the walking ballista queued up. Or he could be going for another... Nope! It's walking ballista. It's time for the ballista to get the combo going. And Steven is crashing in for 3, 6, 11 damage. And not even counting the walking ballista... And Heliod is going to activate, give the Arcanist Owl lifelink, and that's going to put a plus one plus one counter on the Walking Ballista and gain Rob three life in this exchange. But more importantly, that's going to bring Steven down to six. And Rob has the option to go infinite next turn. So Steven has to figure out a way to deal with that Heliod. At least get it out of play well i mean he's got to be able to exile it because if he bounces the heliod then 
uh, Rob is just going to be able to play it next turn, and the activation is only one and a white, and he's got five mana, and he can go off with that Walking Ballista. So, see, nope, he just scoops it up. He says, I can't beat an infinite Walking Ballista. That's going to be it. And game one is going to go to Rob, and we're going to skip ahead here just a little bit and go on to game two. And here we go. We're on to game two. Rob is taking the lead 1-0, and Steven needs to get this win in just to stay alive. But if Rob takes this, then he's going to take the match and the first place prize at this FNM Pioneer event. And he is hungry for it. There's about just under $100 of FNM store credit on the line. And looks like we're starting off with Steven Gillette playing out a ley line of anticipation and a land pass. Rob lays on the planes and pass. It looks like they're both just kind of getting their land sorted and except for Rob's got a walking ballista on turn two with a single counter on it but that could be incredibly dangerous for Steven and wow Steven has missed a land drop and this is for turn three and that that could be painful if he's off color and mono blue the devotion deck it requires a, a lot of double blue, and he's only got a blue and a Nykthos going. Now, Rob Asano is threatening super lethal with the Heliod the Sun Crown coming down, and Steven finally getting his third land drop, and it looks like he's had counter magic in his hand ready for that Heliod, but he missed it by a turn and a land drop, and that could be critical here, because Rob's got the combo going, and the question is, is he going to kind of gamble and go for it or is he going to take his time because right now he could swing in play a land and I mean the walking ballista could just run into a merfolk trickster or something which could be really bad but it could also just mean the win but Rob isn't going to take any chances instead he's going to drop an Arcanist Owl and that's going to be a 3-3 but more importantly that's 5 pips that is the Heliod ready to go and start its swinging. And it looks like it finds another Heliod. And Steven Gillette says, uh, you know what, Let, let's take a turn off here. We're going to bounce the other Heliod to your hand. And this is going to allow the Walking Ballista to swing in for one and bring Steven down to 19. Steven draws for turn. He, he's hitting his land drops now, but it might just be a little bit too late. He passes the turn, and that, that's the thing, he doesn't really have to do anything because the Ley Line of Anticipation means that he can do everything at the end of Rob's turn and just hold up his entire uh, game plan. So down comes Heliod, and Steven has to use a Wizard's Retort for the painful mana cost of blue, blue, and one. And it looks like Rob says, that's fine. I'm just going to play the other Heliod and start crashing in for four damage. And this is going to bring Steven down to 15. And Steven's not in great shape here. Mainly because Rob's got the combo out and it doesn't look like Steven has much of a way to interact with it. Steven going over his options really in the tank here. He doesn't want to lose out this FNM win to a simple two-card combo and all a missed land drop that could have put Steven in a much better position against those Heliods. I guess you could say the Heliods are against Steven right now? Okay, I know that was terrible. But it looks like Steven says he's going to pass the turn and on Rob's upkeep, here comes a Merfolk Trickster to try and slow down the combo by tapping the Heliod. But Rob says, in response, he's going to float mana into Nykthos, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Walking Ballista, use Heliod to give it lifelink, and Walking Ballista shoots one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that is going to be a KO and a match win for Rob Pisano and Walking Ballista, just showing how brutally oppressive it can be. It's such a great card, but Heliod doing work and making that instant combo go off. But that's gonna be it for us this time on Fat Pack Magic. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. Make sure you hit that notification bell and tap subscribe. That way you always know when I got my newest video coming out. And hit that like button. 
not just for me, but for my players too. And if you like behind the scenes footage, deck tech, and all kinds of crazy stuff like that, check us out on Instagram. And if you like this content and you wanna support us, check us out on Patreon. We have amazing cool stuff that we give away every month, like Unstable Basic Lands, signed by me of course, and these amazing exclusive one of a kind playmats featuring the Mox Pearl held by Sarah. And you can't buy these anywhere in stores, you can only get them on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and may all your packs be fat.